All right. Hey, everybody. So um, what we're doing in math today is not in the ratio packet. I attached the document we're using to um, the assignment in Google Classroom. So if you have a printer, please print that out and do the problems with me. If you do not have a printer, um, please get a separate sheet of paper or even if you have your math journal and you can do the work with me um, on on these problems and then uh, when you come back you can just show me the work that you did in a separate piece of paper so what we're practicing today is sort of the, the ideas we learned in the last couple lessons because they're going to be really important for us going forward while we're working with ratios and ratio tables so we're going to start out with doing a little activity here with simplifying ratios i'll do a couple with you and then i'll have you have you try some on your own i'm just going to get a pencil here real quick Okay, so we're going to be um, comparing amounts of animals on a farm, and we're going to write a ratio for each a pair of animals, and then we're going to simplify it. So, for example, goats to roosters. First thing I'm going to do for goats to roosters, I'm going to label that goats, roosters. Okay, goats is on top, roosters on the bottom. Goats, 20. Roosters, 16. So this is a ratio of goats to roosters. And what we're going to do is simplify it. We're going to think, well, what can we divide 20 and 16 by? We can divide those both by 4. So I'm going to show my division by using my arrows here. Divide by 4. Divide by 4. 20 divided by 4 is 5. 16 divided by 4 is 4. So this ratio here is the simplified ratio. Can't simplify that one anymore. So let's try to uh, try a couple together, and then I want you to try the rest on your own. So we have roosters to horses. Roosters on top, horses on the bottom. Roosters, there's 16. Horses, there's 18. It's a pretty close ratio. Almost the same number of horses are roosters to horses. So we'll think, what can we divide 16 and 18 by? We can divide them both by 2. So we'll divide by 2 on the top. We'll divide by 2 on the bottom. What's 16 divided by 2? It is 8. 18 divided by 2 would be 9. And that would be our simplified ratio right there, 8 to 9. All right, let's try one more together. We got roosters to cows. So still with the roosters, we're keeping on with the roosters. And then cows. So again, a ratio is comparing two amounts. We're comparing roosters, which is again 16, and cows is 15. Here's the thing. Can you can we divide 16 and 15 by the same number other than one? I don't think so. Four wouldn't work, three wouldn't work, five wouldn't work, two wouldn't work. So this is it. This is the simplified ratio. So sometimes it's already simplified and you can't divide any longer. And that happens. So what I want you to try now is using these numbers on the side, um, I want you to write these three as ratios and simplify them if you can. If you can't, just like roosters to cows, then you would just leave it as it is. So I'll highlight those. These are the ones we're going to try on our own. Again, if you do not have this document and you cannot print it, um, please do these on a separate sheet of paper. Of course, you can be looking at the document. It is on Google Classroom, so you can open that up and look at the numbers as you're writing them. But you can probably also see them on the screen, too, if you pause it. So take a minute, pause it now, try those three ratios, and then at the end of the video, you can check your answers um, on the document in Google Classroom. Okie dokie. Now, it says Mason and Laney. So the, now we're going to be working more with ratios. We're going to write them as fractions. Mason and Laney ran laps to train for the long-distance running team. The ratio of the number of laps Mason ran, so laps Mason ran, to the number of laps Laney ran was 2 to 3. It says, if Mason ran four miles, how far did Laney run? Well, we actually are given a ratio right off the bat, up top. 
It's laps Mason ran to laps Laney ran. So we can put like to label it M laps on top to Laney laps. Okay, and the ratio they give us is Mason to Laney is two to three. So for every two laps Mason runs, Laney runs three. And it says if race and Ma <laughs> race and race and Mason, if Mason ran four miles, how far did Laney run? Well, that four relates to Mason. That four goes with Mason. So if we're going to write an equivalent ratio to solve this problem, we're going to put the four up here with Mason. We're going to make a fraction. And then whatever this number is, that's going to be the answer for Laney. Okay, so how can we get from 2 to 4? Can we do that in one step? Looks like we can multiply by 2. So then how can we get from 3 to this number? We would also multiply by 2. What is 3 times 2? 6. So that means the, the answer is how far did Laney run? 6 miles. Laney ran 6 miles. I'm just going to add that there. Laney ran six miles. So again, that's using a what's called a proportion. It's two ratios, two equivalent ratios that are equal to each other. And we either multiply or divide to find the number we're missing. Let's try this one. It's very similar. It's very similar. If Laney ran 240 meters, how far did Mason run? Well, we'll set this ratio up the same way because the ratio, original ratio, is still the same. We got Mason laps to Laney laps. So the ratio is 2 to 3. All right, so this number, 240, would that go with Mason or Laney? Well, it does say Laney ran 240 meters. So for Laney, which is on the bottom, we're going to put that 240 on the bottom. Whatever this is, is going to, be our, going to be our answer. Well, can we get from 3 to 240 in one step? Let me think about this. Instead of 240, let's think about 24. How can you get from 3 to 24? You could multiply by 8. So how would we get from 3 to 240? You can multiply by 80. So we'd have to do the same thing on the top. 2 times 80 is 160. 160, so Mason ran 160 meters. Mason ran 60 meters. Now this next question is actually going to be pretty easy for us. And again, if you don't have this, this paper, you're doing the work with me on a separate sheet of paper here. What ratios can we say are equivalent to 2 to 3? 2 to 3 is the ratio we started with. So what are some other ratios that are the same? Well, we have 4 to 6. That's equivalent. I can tell it's equivalent because we multiply by the same number to get to 4 to 6. And there's another one too. 160 to 240. That is another ratio that's equivalent to 4 to 6. And there are many, many, many more. There's an infinite number of ratios that are equivalent to 2 to 3. Like, if we multiply the top and bottom by 3, we can get like 6 to 9. Or if we multiply the top and bottom by 4, you get 8 to 12. These are all equivalent. They all have the same value. Some, some of the numbers are just a different uh, value. But the relationship, the ratio is the same. All right. I'm going to try a couple more here. All right, it says Josie took a multiple choice end of the year vocabulary test. It says the ratio of the number of problems Josie got incorrect to the number of problems she got correct is two to nine. So we're comparing incorrect to correct. Those are the two things we're comparing. Now, it says if Josie missed eight questions, how many did she get right? So we'll have to use this ratio here to help us figure that out. It's incorrect to correct. So we'll put incorrect on top. 
I'm just going to abbreviate it as ink, and correct on the bottom. And that ratio they give us is 2 to 9. Now, if she missed 8 questions, that would be incorrect. Now, 8 is how many she missed, so that's going to go on top. Can we get from 2 to 8 in one step? I believe we can. So we're going to put that 8 on top. And whatever number she get, we get on the bottom, that's going to be how many she got correct. That's going to be our answer, because we're looking for how many did she get right. Well, how can we get from 2 to 8? We can multiply by 4, it looks like. How can we get from 9 to this mystery number? We can also multiply by 4. What's 4 times 9? That would be 36. So how many did she get right? 36. Yeah, Josie got 36 right. So we used a ratio, we used a proportion to help us get that answer. Well, here's, you know, similar question, different numbers. Now, if Josie missed 20, how many did she get right? We're going to use that same ratio they give us up top. Incorrect to correct. Incorrect would be 2 to 9. That's the ratio they, give us, they gave us up top. And then we're thinking, well, she missed 20 questions this time. So that, maybe, that means she probably got more right. So that 20 is what she missed. That would go on top because it's incorrect. We can get from 2 to 20 in one step. And then whatever this is, that's going to be our answer. Well, how can we get from 2 to 20? be times 10. Do that same thing to the bottom, times 10. What's 9 times 10? That would be 90. So if she got missed 20, she would actually get a lot more correct because the ratio is 2 incorrect for every 9 correct. She would get 90. A Josie got 90 right. Wow, pretty good for her. Pretty, pretty good. So it says, what ratios can we say are equivalent to 2 to 9? Well, equivalent means they have the same value. We actually already figured out two. One is 8 to 36. We know that's equivalent because we multiply by the same number on the top and bottom. And we also got 20 to 90, which is equivalent because we multiply by the same thing on the top and bottom. And also, these are all three of these are equivalent to each other because, again, we either in proportion, we multiplied the same number in the top and bottom. So let's come up with another possible ratio of the number Josie got wrong to the number Josie got right. So the ratio is 2 to 9. Well, what's another ratio we could come up with? Well, if we multiply the top by 2, we get 4. If we multiply the bottom by 2, we get 18. So 4 to 18 is another possible ratio because we're multiplying the same number on the top and bottom. So this question is key. It says describe how to create equivalent ratios. So what to do to create equivalent ratios is you multiply or divide both amounts by the same, whoa, whoa, pencils, losing graphite, by the same number. And so we use equivalent ratios to help us find um, answers to problems, to help us work through different situations related to cooking, related to running, related to just any, any comparison of two amounts. Okay, We're actually going to skip this. If you wanted to try this one about Shani and Mel, uh, go for it. If you want to do that one on your own, um, you can pause it and try it on your own. But uh, we're going to look at the back here because we're going to try a couple of these uh, ratio tables that we looked at last week. So again, a ratio table is just another way to set up a ratio. Um, we're going to use the same type of thinking we did with the proportions we just used um, to help us solve these problems. So it says Henry's making a friendship bracelet. That's very nice. For every three inches of yellow string, he needs five inches of red string. If Henry has two feet of yellow string, how many inches of red string will he need? Now, this is quite a question here. 
because these are in inches and this is in feet. So we might want that in inches as well. So how many inches is two feet? That would be 24 inches. All right, well, that's a good question. So what are we comparing? We're comparing yellow string to red string. So what we'll do is we'll put the yellow on top in this ratio table. Yellow's on top, red's on the bottom. And what's the ratio they give us to start off? It says for every three inches of yellow, he needs five of red. And then it says if Henry has 24 inches of yellow string, how many inches of red will he need? Well, would that 24 go on top of the bottom? Well, the 24 is yellow. So wherever yellow would go would be the top. Can we get from 3 to 24 in one step? Yes, we can. So 24 is going to go on top like that. This will be our answer. So how much red will he need if he needs 24 yellow? Well, we can get from 3 to 24 in one step by multiplying by 8. We'd have to do the same thing to the bottom to get an equivalent ratio. 5 times 8 is 40. So how, much, how many inches of red string will he need? So he needs 40 inches of red string. Okay. So we're going to try the next one on our own, and I'm going to have you try, or I'm sorry, the next one together, and then I'm going to have you finish up and try these last two on your own. I'll have the answers on a document on the Google Classroom if you want to, so you can check it when you're done. It says Merle is making his world famous chili recipe. The recipe calls for 20 tablespoons of chili powder, powder excuse me, for every 36 tomatoes. How many tomatoes would Merle put in the chili? If he had only 16 tables of chili powder, it should be powder right there. Okay, well, let's see what we're, ratio we're dealing with here. So he's making his world famous chili. Recipe calls for 20 tablespoons of chili powder. So that's the first thing we're looking at. And we're comparing the chili powder to tomatoes. Okay, so let's put our labels first on our ratio table. So we got uh, tablespoons of CP. I mean, that kind of have to abbreviate. We don't have a lot of space in there. Just going to zoom in a little bit. And then uh, we got tomatoes on the bottom. Tomatoes. All right, let's see. The original ratio is 20 tablespoons of chili powder to 36 tomatoes. It says, how many tomatoes would Merle put in the chili if he only had 16 tablespoons of powder? Now, that 16 is powder. So that would go on top. But here's the thing. Can we get right from 20 to 16 by dividing or multiplying? I can't think of a number that would work. So we'll put the 16 down here. We'll leave some space because we might need to simplify this or we might need to change this to get to 16. So I'm thinking, what can we divide 20 and 36 by? If we divide by 2, we get to 10, but we can't really get from 10 to 16. What if we divided by, well, 4 wouldn't work either. 5 wouldn't work. Actually, I think I wrote this problem wrong. If you could, we're going to change that. I'm sorry. We're going to change that 16 to 15. I wrote this problem wrong. So change that um, that's 16, my bad, to 15. Now, normally you wouldn't do this. The numbers should be right, but we had to change this because the numbers didn't work out for us here, and I apologize for that. All right. The, on the other ones, it will work. Okay. So we want to get from 20 to 15. Again, we can't do that in one step. So what can we divide 20 and 36 by? Well, we can divide them both by 4. That's their GCF. That's the greatest number you can divide them by. Okie dokie. So 20 divided by 4 is 5. 36 divided by 4 is 9. Now this is going to be our answer. This is how many tomatoes he would need. How can we get from 5 to 15? 
example, that would be multiplying by 3, right? And then 9, we'd also multiply by 3 to get 27. So he needs 27 tomatoes. Okay. So from here on in, I want you to try these two on your own. This number four one can be very tricky. But we're going to try try those two on your own. Number, th number three is not too bad. Number four um, is a little tricky. My, my clue to you is this. You may need to multiply first and then divide. Number three, you're probably going to divide the ratio first and then multiply, just like we did up here. But for this bottom one, you may need to multiply first and then divide. So after you try those, you can check your answers against mine. If you didn't get them right, please change your change the work, change the answers, make those corrections, and I'll be checking this when you come back. All right, have a great day. If you have any questions, let me know. Bye-bye.